So in National Electric Code 2017, if you're installing solar on a residential roof, I believe that's where the requirement ends, you must have panel level or module level quick disconnect, DC disconnect. So there can't be more than 80 volts leaving any section of the roof. So that calls for panel level. Microinverters fulfill this because they will shut down if there's no grid. If you're doing an array, then you've got some workarounds to do. Tigo, T-I-G-O, I think it's pronounced Tigo, provides a solution for this. So I'm putting an 8.4 kilowatt array up. That's 21 panels at 395 or 400 watts a piece. And what I've done is I've installed, or I'm in the middle of installing a Tigo disconnect system, quick disconnect system for the DC side. So I wanna show you real quick what components uh, are required for it and how they're kind of plugged in, so to speak. So we'll start at the breaker panel. So this is my AC breaker panel that I'm installing my solar into. These are my solar inverters. This is just a, one, a little 15 amp breaker that has a 12 gauge wire, which is overkill for what it needs to be. And it runs over here to this box I put on the wall. And you'll notice this is, this is my laundry room utility closet, right? So I've got my two grid tie inverters here. So that wire comes out of this conduit right here and it runs up right here into this conduit. Let me meet you outside and show you where it goes. All right, so here we are outside and we are out by my utility meter here and I have my AC quick disconnect box here. This thing's got a, a safety on it. You have to have it off in order to open the box. That wire that I was talking about is this one right here and this runs to the line side of the disconnect. And then here is the load side. That's just a ground wire for, you know, it's electrical. So this is the load side. So all this does, is with it up, it makes a connection between line and load. So this is gonna be an additional disconnect compared to the breaker that's in the panel. Uh, this gives a place for a fireman to come to my house. There's gonna be big red labels here saying that it's the PV disconnect and they can pull that and that will cause all electricity to cease from the panels down to the inverter and even from the panels to each other. You probably already asked yourself, well, how would it make it stop? We're gonna get to that, hold on one second. Let me show you where this wire goes. All right, so we saw the line wire coming up. This is coming from my breaker over here, coming up here to outside, and then it comes back as the load wire, and that's this wire right here that runs into this. This is a small 12 volt power supply. And then, um, of course, it's got the neutral that runs back to the electrical panel. I have my positive and negative wires running to my Tigo rapid shutdown system transmitter here. This is kind of where the magic happens. This runs up into this coil. And what it does is this generates a signal. That coil, the transmitter and the coil generate a signal and it puts it onto one side of my PV wire. So I chose the black, which is all of my negatives. So I have four, um, four rays up there of five or six panels a piece and it sends that onto there. So let me show you up on the roof real quick what it's sending that signal to. So each of these panels behind me has one of these. This is the TS4AF. So this provides the uh, disconnect for the fireman switch. Um, this will do, what, 90 volts, 15 amps, so up to a 500 watt panel. I have, uh, these are 400 watt panels, so we're good. Um, what this does, right? This has, it's kind of like a microinverter, right? You've got two sets of wires in and out. The short ones connect to the panel. These long wires with the yellow tag will connect from uh, each panel to the next panel. But with this connected, and this doesn't sense any signal from the transmitter downstairs, there's going to be no voltage on these long wires at all. As soon as that transmitter has power via 12 volts, then it will start transmitting a turn on signal. This will turn on at every single panel and you will suddenly have voltage. For me, it's about 220 uh, DC down to the inverter and the inverter can start using that energy. As soon as this guy loses power, right? How does it lose power? Just go through this real quick. Either the breaker is off. So if I'm in this room and I want to turn off something for maintenance, I can flip that breaker that will then turn off the Tigo transmitter, which will then turn off all of the solar panels. 
and if I then hit my AC bypass to off on my inverters, then my inverters will be isolated from the grid as well as from the panels. Uh, with a lot of installations, years ago, right, you would just go straight to the inverter. Um, there have been code updates where you've got to have that DC disconnect switch which you know the inverters have now, right? So you've got this DC disconnect switch here, but you still have high voltage inside the inverter landing on these, these terminals here, right? These are coming straight from the panels. In my case, they're going through the Tigo DC quick disconnects. That allows me to meet National Electric Code, NEC 2017 rules for uh, fire safety, I believe is the, the reason for these to be here. So now, if someone comes, the house is on fire, some other emergency, they can run to the back, flip the switch, solar is off. They don't even have to worry about conduit or forbid bare wires um, running through the attic with high voltage DC. If they have to climb on the roof and shatter a solar panel, they only have to worry about the voltage on that solar panel. If they have to, you know, if they accidentally like, you know, took a chainsaw to a piece of conduit up on the roof, then there wouldn't be any voltage on it. So that's the, the safety aspect of it. I, I feel like, yes, it costs me a little bit more. I think it's about six or 800 bucks for the pieces and it makes it a little more complicated. Like I wouldn't need this box here at all. This is all just for the DC disconnects. Um, if I was doing this without that. Uh, if it was a ground mount or like a carport or something that I had, I wouldn't need it either. For NEC, NEC, and any, under NEC 2017 rules, this is for putting on your roof, which covers a lot of residential installations. But say I did go build a carport and throw solar on it, then I wouldn't necessarily need this. Um, but I would consider it, or maybe even put one that, because in, in, I don't know if it was 2015, that was the previous NEC release, they had it to where there had to be a dis disconnect for the array on the roof. So like you could have the high voltage on the roof, but then there was a, a relay or switch between the roof going into the conduit down to the inverters and it would switch off up there. And these inverters actually have the capability to run a Delta model array level shutdown like that. But with 2017, you gotta have it per uh, panel individually. Uh, something that this Tigo system allows you to do is to run some of these older string inverters. If you're looking at get, getting under the 2017 regulations, then a lot of people are going to go, well, you need to go microinverters, uh, which does fix the problem. They all turn off individually. But these, like these ver inverters, are six kilowatt and they cost me about 600, 650 bucks a piece. So very inexpensive. Uh, and so adding the Tigo disconnects uh, only incrementally adds to that. So if I had to do microinverters, I don't think I could do it for 600 bucks plus the 600 for the other one. That's a little overkill. I'm doing that so I can add more panels later. So, you know, 1300 bucks worth of inverters and 700 bucks worth of disconnects. Um, and uh, yes, I realized that the Tigo adds another piece on the roof that can go bad. You have to pop a panel to be able to replace it. But I feel like something like this, which is probably just a MOSFET switch inside, is going to be a lot more reliable than an actual microinverter sitting out in the sun under a panel for years and years and years. I know that Enphase is, is a great company, but I've heard a lot of horror stories about either getting a bad batch or even just they die with age. You know, you got something that's sitting 130, 140 degrees sitting up on a roof. It's, it's, that's hard on electronics, even if they are made to, to handle that kind of heat. So that's why I went with the Tigo system was because I wanted to use these inexpensive inverters that provide islanding features. That's something that a lot of microinverters don't. Um, this one, I can run an output here on these smaller ones. So if I ever do lose power from the grid, I could run a couple of outlets off of that and get power from the sun without a battery, at least while the sun is shining. And that was a big reason for me to go with these inverters. That's my quick explanation on the Tigo disconnect. And it seems like a pretty affordable system for what it does.